The countries with the best gamers. Finally, we're going to figure out where exactly is Gamer Nation. First things first, the US is actually not number one on the list. Uh, they're actually not even beating out Canada. We're doing this per capita, so we're trying to figure out how many elite gamers are in segments of 10 million population. So though we have a lot of epic gamers inside of the USA, we still have over 330 million people living here. So on a percentage basis, we're not doing that great. We are, however, absolutely obliterating all of Latin America. The top country in Latin America is Brazil with 100. Most of Africa is not included on the list except for South Africa. They are pretty low though. Saudi Arabia is beating out both the US and Canada with over 282. There's a couple other nations that are doing pretty good in this peninsula as well though. The UAE, Kuwait, Bahrain. Australia is killing it with over 300. That's the first 300 nation we've seen. New Zealand is following pretty close behind though. Extremely surprised to see this. I really thought Taiwan, Japan, or South Korea would at least take like the bronze, silver, or gold. But again, because we're measuring the entire population of the country, that's what's bringing these places down. In order to win, you actually probably want to come from like a medium-sized population. Russia not doing that good as well. Europe for sure seems to be the gamer continent since they have many nations with over 200 here. France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Switzerland, Germany. None of these countries are still in the top three though, believe it or not. Ireland and Spain doing both pretty well for themselves, but they still haven't cracked over 400 yet. The bronze medal goes to Portugal at 485. Then there's the nation of Finland at 561. They're grabbing the silver and they're utterly dominating the other Nordic countries. I'm surprised to see all these places so low. And number one is the UK. The UK is gamer nation. I feel like I should have predicted this, but I'm still a little surprised. Again, there's probably several factors that go into this. It definitely helps if you live in a place with, you know, maybe good internet. If your entire country has good internet, that's maybe a good sign that you have more gamers out there. And if you had good internet for your whole life, I think that also probably helps. It also obviously helps if overall your nation is very economically developed because again, you, it costs money to play games. It's a pretty expensive hobby sometimes. Again, this is only one methodology though. If you didn't know, Reddit's R place is back and this is pixels based off country's population. Now, I've covered this several times in the past. This seems to be like an annual tradition on Reddit. You basically have the entire internet getting together and only allowed to make one one pixel every like what is it 30 seconds or something like that you have to kind of get together with like a massive community to be able to draw all this stuff there's obviously so many little details that are happening within this single image there's also a ton of wars that happen too at the same time so we can actually take the number of pixels drawn and divide up each country and then using the overall internet using population of each country figure out which place is doing the best so Brazil's doing well but they're at the bottom of this list at four percent they have made about 5 million pixel drawings out of their 143 million internet using population. Mexico's a little bit ahead of them at 6%, though they've made less pixel drawings, they have less internet using population. There's the US at 7%, though we've made a ton of pixels, 21 million to be exact, um, out of the overall internet population, it's still kind of low. At least compared to the top 5, Turkey, Canada, Argentina, France, and Germany. And Germany is not messing around with this. 22 million pixels have been drawn over the course of just a couple weeks out of the 75 million people that are actually using the internet in Germany. That's like a third of the country at least drew one pixel. It's probably not that way. It's probably some really dedicated users, but this is still insane. Germany does not mess around when it comes to this stuff. I mean, you can literally see the German flags that are just everywhere. I guess this shouldn't be a surprise. Barbenheimer trending in every US state, or basically which state prefers which movie, kind of. The least surprising data out of this map is that New Mexico loves Oppenheimer. Obviously, more than half the movie takes place in New Mexico, just like it did in real life. I love how that state is pretty much known for nuclear bombs and no-no crystals from Breaking Bad. On the opposite side of things, the biggest fans from Barbie is coming out of Mississippi. Didn't expect that. I'm honestly trying to explain this and I really can't do it. Are they fans of Barbie or do they just really not care about bombs? Surprisingly, all of the Deep South is really obsessed with Barbie. Now this is coming out of Google Trends. Of course, the methodology here could be a little bit confusing. The Deep South could be possibly not liking Barbie and they're trying to search up more information about it. On the opposite side of things, if the setting for Oppenheimer is New Mexico, the setting for Barbie is pretty much California, but we don't care about that, I guess. Love the states that are just completely divided, like Delaware, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. 
Johnson is actually a lot, they just cannot make a choice. The largest language sections of Wikipedia by number of articles. Wikipedia now has 321 language sections and 18 contain more than 100,000 articles. So to start things off, we have Wikipedia in Ukrainian, in Vietnamese, in Chinese, Egyptian, Arabic, Italian, Spanish, which knowing how popular Spanish is in the world, they're actually really low on this list. Maybe like Spanish speaking countries don't like to use Wikipedia. I guess the same could be said for Chinese, but then again, is Wikipedia even allowed in China? Yeah, it's been blocked since 2015. So those are just users outside of China using it. That means if it wasn't banned, they probably would be way up there. After Spanish, there's Russian, there's Dutch, there's French, there's Swedish, there's German. Germany is actually the third on this list, almost 3 million articles. Number one is English. That shouldn't be surprising at all, but number two is shocking. First of all, what is that? Is that supposed to be Tagalog? Nope. Uh, those seem to be two very different languages. Why did I think it was mostly Tagalog that was spoken in the Philippines? Well, it is mostly Tagalog at 40%, but uh, this language is at 22. I'm not surprised to see the Philippines so high on this list because the Philippines really love to be online. They have some of the highest percentages of population online out of the entire world. This is showing us largest language Wikipedias weighted by depth. And this is obviously a bit less surprising because English is just destroying it. Weighted article count in the millions. The ranking order comes a little bit differently. Uh, Portuguese actually shows up here. Again, considering the amount of Portuguese speakers, I figured they'd be maybe a little bit higher. Spanish is still somewhat at the bottom. Vietnamese though is in third. I love this is a constant race. Like you probably update this every year and the numbers are going to constantly change. Inflation rate out of the G7 countries. And man, I thought we had it bad in the US. The US is actually towards the bottom here. It's European nations that are having to deal with this way worse with France, Italy, Germany, and then of course, like I mentioned, the British. This is annual percentage change. So it went up by 8%. This inflation stuff is killing me. I remember in high school, I used to be able to get a bean burrito from Taco Bell, three of them for like, 326. I don't know why I remember the, the, the number so specifically. I think it's because I always used to eat them. I still eat them. Three bean burritos now from Taco Bell is like over $7. I don't want to live in this world anymore. Trade balances around the world. So China has the largest trade surplus currently, whereas the US has the largest trade deficit. Meanwhile, there are other countries like Russia, Germany, the Netherlands, and Ireland, which are doing pretty good. Not as good as China, but you know, like Germany's kind of, kind of close. India's kind of like the US. They're struggling with us, though they're only one ranking above. They um, they aren't dealing with these sorts of numbers that we're dealing with. What are we doing? Meanwhile, also Australia doing pretty okay. They have a trade surplus. I'm not even going to begin to try to break this map down. There's probably a massive number of factors that are affecting this stuff. The bizarre 1920 proposal to create a new peaceful European Union. These are 24 artificially created states inside of the continent. I remember seeing some really weird flag proposals when the EU was first created. I didn't realize they were just basing it off of a possible map. What was going on in their head? This is the point in the center here. Is this where you'd like put the base? This is insane. This seems like some sort of evil villain's lair. Something out of like James Bond or something. They're each like divided by continents. Again, this is before WW2. It's actually right after WW1. I'm sure they didn't want to recreate it. I mean, one thing's for sure, if they did do that, there probably wouldn't be a WW2. I mean, Maybe, or maybe, I don't, I don't even know. If the Europe actually looked like this, I would want a WW2, honestly. <laughs> This is Baba Bowie. horrible. Population growth out of every continent. And the place that stands out most to me is obviously the continent of Europe. Only 2% in 20 years. From 727 million to 742 million. There are a lot of countries that are included here. I'm not really sure. Is Russia counting? Is half of Russia counting for Europe and the other half for Asia? North America actually has the second lowest growth on this list, but it's still at 20%. I'm going to imagine we are actually really helped out a lot by Mexico. I mean, the year 2000, Mexico was still under 100 million. Now they're at 126 million compared to Canada, which really only grew. I mean, for their size at 30, they grew by like 8 million. I mean, they didn't really have a lot to work with. What do you expect? It is actually just the, the U.S. I mean, it's the U.S. And, and Mexico. The U.S. grew by like almost 50 million. Surprisingly, on a percentage basis, Asia is actually in third. I'm really shocked about that. But again, it is percentage. They started with 3.7 billion and they grew to 4.5 billion. That is a huge explosion. But percentage 
wise, not that much. And of course, they're really helped out by China and India. But then just overall, there are several other, uh, most of the world live right here. There's Indonesia, there's Japan as well. South America's in fourth place. They started at 350 million. They're now at 428, or probably a little bit above that if you're talking about right now in 2023. There's Australia, which looks like, man, they got a whole bunch of population, but that's because they started with 19 million and now they're at 24. So, I mean, they did grow by more than a quarter percent. Maps without New Zealand, I can see. And then finally, there's Africa. And Africa is going to continue to have, I mean, maybe not this high of a percentage, but they're going to continue to explode in population. Actually, the Asia number is going to continue to drop. I don't know if it's ever going to get as low as Europe's, but Africa is going to continue to stay really high. Now I need to see Antarctica. They had one person 20 years ago. Now they have two. 100% increase, baby. Male body hair distribution of indigenous human populations around the world. Now, I don't know where I exactly I would rank on this map. I think people believe that I'm not super hairy. I'm pretty hairy. You just can't see it because my hair is blonde. But I got hair like, you know, I don't know. I, I won't say everywhere, but... <laughs> my legs are hairy as sh I did a DNA test and I'm mostly coming from England, Ireland, and Sweden. Uh, I'm supposed to be relatively hairy, I guess. Well, the Swedish numbers should be pulling up even more than like average. But this is a fascinating map because it really seems like there's an epicenter for hair and it's around the Mediterranean. Of course, it's also in the Nordics. I mean, it's really cold up there. I, I guess you kind of need hair. But that doesn't explain other areas. Whoa, what is happening here? That is a very strange outlier there, Japan. I get in the colder climates you want more hair that would that would help but then that really doesn't explain the indigenous people out of greenland or northern canada that could just be because humans just relatively recently got over to these continents they needed a couple more million years to develop and get more hair because of the colder climates possibly if humans started in africa and then they moved their way to europe and asia they had a lot more time to develop their climates but judging on like just a map basis the world is actually not super hairy we have all the americas a large part of africa this part of asia i mean these these are light green so it's it's not much either i didn't realize japan was so hairy the exaggerated topography of the american continents and this map actually explains a whole lot about our history and colonization first of all there is a giant mountain range that carves up north america all the way from canada to mexico and even down into central america and the theme continues all the way through south america as well which is where we see the divide between argentina and chile i'm always surprised to see how hilly and mountainous brazil is because i always just imagine it's just a giant rainforest, but that's only this area. Also, very interesting to see how mountainy Hispanolia is compared to Cuba or Puerto Rico. This map can also explain to you why U.S. population density is the way it is. More than half of U.S. citizens live, like, down to the right of this line. Kind of hard to live in this sort of terrain. This is also why California's population is pretty much squeezed along the coast. That because there's, like, a bunch of desert over there. That must have been so trippy for explorers to be exploring the American continent, see all this flat land on the right, then go around Cape Horn and just see nothing but mountains all the way up. Imagine that. Like Florida's just super flat. And over here, I mean, they didn't see it along the coast, but once they went a little bit inland, they saw just tons and tons of mountains. That might have been a little confusing. The most popular apps worldwide. And in this current moment, it is TikTok with over 672 million downloads. Is that what that is? Yes, it's getting very close to 1 billion. The next app is Instagram at 547. And just behind that is actually Facebook. I can't believe how well Facebook still holds up. I do not have WhatsApp, but whenever I meet someone that does have WhatsApp, they're very confused why I don't have it. I guess I should probably get that. Then there's Telegram and Twitter, who's getting really beaten down. I had Be Real for like a week there. Uh, it was just too real for me. I couldn't be that real. My life is too boring. Biggest video game app is Subway Surfers. And then it's Stumble, guys. I don't even know what that is, but there's Roblox. I watched someone play FIFA Mobile on a plane for like five hours the other day. Don't know why I wanted to share that. I don't think I know any of these shopping categories except for Amazon. Spotify is still the number one music app. Where is Apple Music even on this? I guess Apple Music comes with the... Is that why they're not on here? Overall, by app category, like, everything's just being destroyed by entertainment. I mean, social's, I guess, pretty close up there, too. Look at DoorDash and Uber Eats competing with, like, you know, the likes of Starbucks, McDonald's. I need to download some more apps. Big thanks to my patrons. Destiny. 9,000. Drew needs to pay his taxes. Why am I doing Karina this? Best John. Girl. Denver. I'm the kidnapper. Jack Oop, Travis, Drew's the annoying friends. friends. This Inquisitors. By Zeris. Zeris. Good old Australia is real. Book. I am not a paid actor. Logan by 610. Patrick Dye. Subscribe to the Mexican Now, Thwick and Hamster. Become a patron by checking the description down below.